Brian, 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 Brian. So we've been talking for 10 minutes already, but we just hit live. Yes, you are here at Litvak Leadership Live. Back in the house, the one, the only, Pauly G. Pauly, welcome again to Litvak Leadership. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. I, um, I, I just realized that uh, it's too dark in here. And I got to go over and pull the shades up. Is that that kind of mess? Go guy? ahead, pull the shades uh, up. I'll do, I'll do it real quick. Okay, it's 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 all right. The sun just hit behind the building over there. Which is what happened? So I got to make some light. Oh, yeah. I got this big building that gets in the way, and then in, in like two hours, I'll have to take the shades down again because the sun comes out on the other side of the building. What are you gonna do? All right, I'm coming back. I'm All there. right, come on back. All right, let's go. You know, I have to apologize. I'm sorry. Maybe some other people could help do this for us. I, I've been so busy today. Took my yeah. wife to get her second vaccine. Okay. Okay. And, uh, I went and I had some great pizza. At, um, I can't tell you where because I put an Instagram post out to ask everybody where the pizza's from. I, so saw that. Me, I saw that. I'm not even going to say what borough I went to for my wife's vaccine because that might give something away. Now, now, what is? I've never been to New York. What is a borough? They just divided the uh, city into five. You know, geopolitical. I don't know if that's the right word. Okay. Sections. Sections. Okay. Five of them. I don't know. They're like county. Each one is a county, by the way. So Kings oh, okay. County is Brooklyn. Queens County is. Queens, um, Staten Island is Richmond County, Manhattan, I guess, is New York County, and the Bronx is, I guess, Bronx County, the Bronx County Courthouse, the Bronx, not Bronx, the, the Bronx. Bronx, absolutely. Oh, so, yeah, so, but, but it's all one city in terms of, you know, there's one mayor of all right. five boroughs, but each borough has a borough president that allows them to line themselves up to be a stepping stone to the mayoral ship, I guess. Yeah. And, and then they got some kind of council, I'm sure. Yeah, they got all of that, too. But yeah. I, I don't like to talk politics, yeah. but that's what the borough is. Um, and I went, I'm not even going to say if I left this borough or not, because I don't want to give away the answer, <laughs> even though there are a bunch of people that answered already. Some others might want to. Okay, so here's the first question. I was talking to someone the other day, and they told me that it's been so hard. They've been so disappointed. I told them it's been hard for everybody and that they needed to snap out of it. So not, I don't think, and it was off the cuff advice. So let me ask you, Polly G, when people come to you and they're troubled because of the past year, okay? And some people have expanded. Some people have been troubled. What do you say to the troubled people? You know what? I don't say much of anything. Because I'm in North Brooklyn, and where I am, nobody's troubled, okay? Everybody's okay. embracing being safe. Nobody's troubled that they can't go out to a restaurant. They sit out in the cold in their overcoats and eat food that should be about 20 degrees warmer. But okay. they're being safe, and they're doing their share to keep everybody safe, and nobody wants to come inside the restaurant. So there aren't a lot of people who are troubled over this, except other restaurants. Even there are a bunch of restaurateurs, too, who um, don't seem that troubled over it. So, Okay. You know, I mean, it's, it's, what are you going to do? You can't do anything about it. Can't do anything about it. So you just go with the flow and, you know, um, and that's it. Okay. All right. Different question. You guys, uh, the Poly G Empire has expanded during COVID. Most recently on National Pizza Day, uh, opened up in Wicker Park, a neighborhood in, in Chicago. So tell us about that. Well, um, Derek Tung, who owns and operates Logan Square, has been looking to expand for a while. He wanted to do New York style pizza. He felt that that was, you know, something else that he could offer that is not a lot of uh, in, in Chicago. Right. And he's been looking for a while. And unfortunately, due to COVID, a space became available that was in a great location. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the operator who was in there before um, didn't have the right, um, you know, the right stuff for that location or whatever. Uh, maybe not the right stuff for the city. And um, 
he uh, finally found a spot that he could move into that was a good deal. And he started serving, you know, out the window. They're not, uh, they're not ready yet for uh, indoor dining. But uh, he's making New York-style pizza. He uses our recipe with his own twist because anybody who opens up a Paulie G's, is, is, you know, it has all the autonomy they want, almost. Almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> well, you know, he's putting quite a twist on the New York-style pizza. In, in our shop in Greenpoint, I wanted to be an old-school slice shop that serves what you would have gotten 50, 60 years ago. Uh, people want to touch that. They want to feel that they want to taste that right and they want to walk into a place that's like that you know he, he's a little different he's um experimented a great deal already all right uh, and you know he's doing some great stuff but it's the basic dough recipe he's using the same ingredients we just had a discussion just about the tomatoes and, and how we should treat the tomatoes once we open up the can and uh, you know he's staying true to that and uh, you know it's 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 a tough time to do that Starting to get a little traction, but uh, if you're in Chicago and you don't know he's there, it's on Damon, I think is the street. It's, it's like it's Damon, yeah. see two different streets meet over there. It's like six corners, I think. Yep, yep, corners. I know the area. And, and it's great. And you serve a breakfast sandwiches, which is, you know, taking advantage of where he is because he's right by the, the L. The L, the L, yes. Right by the, the language, language. Very good. I guess it's the Damon stop. In Wicca, whatever the Wicker Park stuff, Damon, I think. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, he's doing great stuff. Go on Instagram. He has Paulie G. Uh, Wicker Park Instagram, and you see all the stuff he's doing. So, um, how are you supposed to treat tomatoes when you open them up out of a can? Well, That's an interesting it depends on the tomatoes you're using. We, we, okay. we, I love Tomato Magic by Stanislaus. Absolutely love it. But we've been doing it, um, it comes ground already. No seeds, no um, no skins, and you take it out. And what we were doing is we're putting it right on. I'm, I'm a very basic person when it comes to uh, New York style pizza. There's the sauce, you know, the tomatoes that come out of the can, and and whole milk and part skim mozzarella, you know, shredded and blended together. Nothing else. We were putting Romano on for a while. No Romano. There's enough salt in those two cheeses. That and you get a nice contrast with the sweetness of the, the tomato magic, and, and and that's it. But what I noticed was we had to because we didn't grind them any further. The the, the ground on those delicious tomato magic tomatoes are you know it's a little pulpy, and when you put it on, it's difficult. You wind up leaving too much on the slice. So we're now um, we're now blending them a little bit to thin them out, and that's what we do with them. Okay, now if you're using Another tomato, like a um, that, that's a, a Italian plum tomato or California plum tomato. Like for instance, Stanislaus has Alto Cucinas. You have to mill those and you mix them okay. in with juices in the can. And so these are all canned tomatoes. Yes, yes. So, so why don't you all use fresh tomatoes? It's it's you know, and some pies people do. Okay, uh, but that's just not you know. This is different. It's just. I, I, I was never a fan of fresh tomatoes on a pizza, especially okay. like the big slices of beefsteak tomatoes put on a pie like that. Never a fan. Never okay. A fan. I would like, once in a while, I like uh, Una Pizza Napolitana does a great pie called the Filetti with, with little grape tomatoes or, or cherry tomatoes. Uh, and, and he'll grind on some sea salt, uh, coarsely ground. And and that's a, that's a really good pie, but just not a big fan of that. And, and I learned that the best way to, to serve people food is to cook the food you love and hope that they like it too. If you don't love to eat something, don't cook it just for them. So so your friend who's gone from Logan Square to now Wicker Park, when he first came to you and said, hey, I want to open another shop. I want to open an another pie shop. I'm assuming that was... Was it pre-COVID when he brought it up, or was oh, it? Oh yeah, no, he's been looking to do this for a couple of years. Okay, I would say at least a couple of years. It's not easy to find the right spot with the right deal, but yeah, no, it was definitely pre-COVID. But as you see, you know, Derek is 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 a great guy, and and he, you know, he remains positive all the time, and is not willing, you know, he's willing to take a chance and, and move forward. He didn't let this get in his way. Yeah, and so so for the people that. 
who you have not met, who are challenged and, you know, are, are kind of embracing letting things get in their way. What do you have to say to them? How do they pull out of that? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's like uh, my, my, my big thing is, you know, everybody's pivoting. OK, if I hear the word pivot one more time, I didn't even want to say it myself. Just now. This is pivot. This is right. Right. You get the ball. Well, you, you, you get you get the ball. OK, you run over to, to the, uh, the shortstop gets the ball. You as a second baseman run over to the bag, get the ball, pivot. So you're facing first base and throw the ball. That's pivoting to me. It's the only pivoting I ever want to hear about again. OK, right. but. It, like in my case, you know, everybody's going to outdoor dining to be able to cover their expenses. Uh, I, I really didn't understand how that was going to work in the winter here. And and it probably hasn't. Maybe it's helped some people. But, you know, my, my advice is stay with your strong suit if you can. You know, I'm not going to build a, a palace outside so that in, in June people want to come and sit outside and dine. I'm not going to do that. That's not poorly right. police. I'm staying with my strength. You know, what I offer isn't just pizza. I'm offering, you know, music and conversation as well. And I try to stay with that. People who, you know, but people who are struggling, um, you know, financially, you got to do whatever you can. Um, you know, and there's, there's money out there from the government now. Um, you got to get it. You got to, you know, you got to use that to get you through, you know, get people to help you talk to your landlord. Uh, sometimes that's not easy. What's the difference between a landlord and a sperm cell? What? Sperm cell at least has a one in a million chance of becoming a human being. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah. You what you got to do with that. So. <laughs> and, you know, you got to, you know, you have to, to keep your spirits up. Yeah. You have to look for reasons to feel like things are going to get better. Uh, but at the same time, you have to manage your expectations because, uh, you know, as time goes on now, I, I don't see this changing drastically in the next few months. Uh, well, I, you know. So 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 let's talk about that. So I live in southern Indiana, and you know, with now two more states, and Indiana's not. You're a Saluki. You're a Saluki. No, oh, it's no, a Hoosier. That's Illinois. I did this the last time too. Yeah, it's a Hoosier. You're a Hoosier. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Exactly. So I've seen, you know, with the 14 states now getting rid of the mask mandate, I've started seeing more and more people going into businesses without a mask saying, you know, screw it. This is going away. Yet on the other side, I hear people saying, eh, this is going to be around for another couple years. Uh, what say, say you, Polly? Well, look, no one's definitively been able to say that I can't give it, even though I've had both of my vaccines now and it's been two weeks since then, that they have not definitively been able to say that I can't still carry it and give it to somebody else. They, we need more data on that. You know, somebody, I, I, I heard that there was a study in Israel where that it's not the case, but you know, there's all kinds of studies you could play around with them, whatever, until well, the, you got to wear a mask. And I hate where I hate Wearing a mask. Hey, you know, I, what I do now, especially now that I, I've gotten a vaccine, I don't know how much difference that makes. Like yeah. I will walk with it down over my chin because I wear glasses. That, and if you wear a mask, you know how difficult that is, right? Oh, yeah. I pull it down. And if somebody's coming close, I put the mask back on. And, you know, and we all in the restaurant, we, we have to create the safest environment absolutely possible, which we've been doing. So we, we have to have a mask on. And, you know, we just got to do it until there's data otherwise, you know. If, 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 if they say that people who have been vaccinated aren't going to pass it to somebody else, then, you know, and, and I have somebody on my staff who's vaccinated, then I consider them not wearing a mask. But until that, you can't, you know, it's, I don't want to find out the hardware. It's bad enough getting the vaccines. You know, how do you think, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, who knows what these vaccines are going to do to people? But I yeah. know right now that I feel so much better. Like we we were on a road trip. I can't believe this. But, is what but now, do you feel better physically or do you feel better mentally? Oh, mentally. I you know I, I'm not I'm not as afraid to to go somewhere because you know at my age getting it could mean 
the end of my life, right? Sure. I mean, uh, you know, I, I got a little bit down here. I'm, you know, I don't know. Probably if somebody wanted to, they could consider me obese, right? So I don't want to screw around. But now that I've gotten a vaccine, I feel so much better. Uh, and here's a perfect example. We were, um, we just had to get away. I just wanted to get away from everything back in November. We planned on going on a road. I wasn't telling anybody where I was going. I wanted to just get on the road and decide where we were going from day to day. Okay. Oh, by the way, if anybody hasn't seen Nomadland yet, you should see Nomadland. It's a great film. Okay. I've never you, heard, I've heard about it. It just won the Golden Globe. For best ah, film. okay. With, with Francis McDormand, an excellent film. But we wanted to, I wanted to get on the road, go to different towns, visit people I knew, go to restaurants and stuff I wanted to go to if they were open. And, and we started doing that. We started doing that around the middle of November. And the plan was to drive to Tampa where my grandparents settled in this country and I believe met. Everybody's dead now who could tell me otherwise. I don't know if they met in Sicily or they, they met here in a okay. city where he's in Ebor City. But we were gonna go there, park the car, fly back for Thanksgiving, and then come back and continue on our trip to go to Louisiana and go, go to Texas and go to Arkansas and who knows where. But then just as we were doing that, um, first of all, to get back by plane was getting more difficult. We, we had to go find a, a test to get in Tampa so that when we get back to the New York area, we can show them that we've been tested. It just, right. so um, we, and then we started watching it. And at that time, late November, things were starting to spike in all these cities we want to go to, uh, in New Orleans, in, uh, in Houston, and in Austin in particular, and and even uh, we wanted to go to Hot Springs, Arkansas. You know about Hot Springs, Arkansas? Oh, yeah. I've heard it. Yeah, yeah. You want to go there? So we started getting concerned. You know, the last thing we want is to contract it, right? We didn't have our, right. our vaccines yet. And, you know, what happens? Then we couldn't even come home, you know. And so we got in our uh, – we got in the car and headed home. We got – you know, we, we, went, we drove up to see our – uh, family for Thanksgiving in, in Northern Virginia. And then we went home and, you know, we still got a half a trip left. And now, you know, now that we both have our shots, we feel we could do that. And, and there's, there's less of a risk. And, 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 and at the same time, there's more places that are open, which makes it nice. Oh, there's much more places yeah. that, that are open. But, but more importantly, to answer your question, I, I, you know, I, I don't feel, you know, I don't feel as nervous about contracting it because, because it is vaccine. Now, I, you know, every once in a while I think, well, it's only 95%, maybe, you know, but I feel pretty safe. You know, what I, do you talk about besides this pandemic? Yeah, precisely this in a pandemic. I mean, I am hopeful uh, things are going to start opening up, but, you know, I, I think that there are lots of people who want to see things open up, but there's also a lot of people that want to see things stay in a lockdown state because. Uh, they they just you know want one hundred percent protection in their head. Um. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. Yes. Because why can they want that and do that? Because they get an unemployment check in a lot of cases. Uh, All right. With the bonus. With the bonus. Right. Right. So what's the hurry? Uh, let's be safe. You know. Oh, we got to be safe. And, right. And um, additionally. Um, you know, they work from home, kind of like working from home. You know, I think they do. So what's the hurry? Uh, and, 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 you know, and I think that a lot of people are being extra careful because of that. There's, what's in it for them for the things that come back to normal? And, you know, and there are some people who, you know, if things come back to normal, suddenly they got to, they have no excuse not to be successful. Right. Right now, now they got an excuse. So, so what do you think about? We'll we'll delve into uh, nonpartisan politics for 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 a minute. Oh, Six, blah, 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 blah. there's no okay. such thing. No such thing as nonpartisan. I'm going to be nonpartisan. So I may new, not answer your question. Uh, that that's okay. You could say I choose not to answer. So the new COVID relief bill that the House sent to the Senate that the Senate spent 12 hours reading, 600 some odd pages, reading it out loud. And there's all this stuff in there that has nothing to do with COVID re relief. What is that all about? Politics as usual. That's been going on for 
200 years? As long as there's been bills, that's been going on. And I don't understand it. And that is nonpartisan. I agree with you. Because everybody does it. And 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 why is that? And, and you know, they probably could change those rules. But yada, 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 yada. Okay. We won't go there. So let's talk about taking this time that people have now, that they've had uh, for the past year almost, because the 13th is the one-year anniversary of total awareness, I think, for the country of coronavirus. Uh, so as people have spent the past year either doing something, doing nothing, what do you think they should do as we enter into the next year? Because we're a week away from that March 13th date. What they can. What they can. I mean, in... in in you know, in our case, we took advantage because because of it. Uh, in Chicago, we took advantage. There could even be something else being taken advantage of soon. Not sure. Can't say. Yeah, you uh, keep uh, yeah, you keep alluding to something, but I may just be making that up. You know, <laughs> but um, and, and and again, like I I didn't want to just go out on the road for a month. But I, I wanted to get away from all the craziness. You know, I think it was a little more crazy in New York. And I just wanted to get away from that. And so I, we got in our car and we did that. And if you can do that, if you got the vaccine, it's great that restaurant workers can get it now. Because then there's some younger people who can also get it. Right. Uh, but go out and do something that you dream of doing that you can do. You know, in our case, I, you know, I was fortunate enough to have strong staff here. We could do that. We just went. We, uh, you know, we identified places we hadn't been to that we wanted to go to, and that's what we did. Um, other people, you know, if you really have a passion for something and it could flourish in this environment, you know, if you had had a passion for making PPE, <laughs> do that, right? But take advantage of the way things are, you know. And uh, so, what do you think will flourish in this environment? Well, I mean, it's been a year already. I mean, yeah, you know, home cooking has certainly flourished. Okay, okay. Uh, so you know, if, if if you know, I noticed that a lot. All of a sudden, the world is full of bread bakers. Okay, and that's what people did. They started baking bread or whatever. Um, but I, I think, you know what? You want to go back to a baseball game? Go back to a baseball game. If they let yeah. you in, go and do that. You know, you know, feel as safe as you can. Take all your precautions. You know, try to do the things that you haven't been able to do for a while. You know, it, it, there's only so much you can watch, okay? And and actually, they haven't been filming a lot of stuff, so we're going to run out of stuff to watch. So. Yeah. But I don't know. Every time I turn around, there's another show. So there's maybe, something. Maybe. So, so, so tell me about, because I, I had Alyssa on the show. And, and 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 she's just a sweet woman with, with, with a beautiful deli. And then I saw that... They stopped the pop up, and they. She alluded to, she posted about, but kind of in a. I'm not saying much thing that there's going to be a permanent home for Edith's Deli. Yes, there is. It's, it, I think she's going to call it Edith's Sandwich Shop. It doesn't matter. Edith, yeah. It. But yeah, and she's alluded to which neighborhood it's going to be in. She did say it's going to be in Williamsburg. Uh, okay. They found the spot. I can't. Tell, I. I don't think I could tell you where. But they're in there now. They, you know, actually, they got some baking racks that should be removing from the back of my oven right now. I should check okay. the camera to make sure they're getting that done. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, this this was their goal all along. But but okay. it's funny though, and I and I feel really, um, I'm glad I was able to provide them the space where they did because you know they didn't know how they were going to do. They they didn't know. If, if this would take off in New York, but they knew that they, there was a need for it in Chicago. So their plan was to go to Chicago, but they opened up in my shop, right? Right. People started flocking to them and they realized, why am I going to leave Brooklyn? And, you know, yeah. and then they started planning right away. And it, you know, it took a little while, but they found the space, you know, originally it was going to end the middle of October and they asked that they could stay longer and, you know, and, and I wanted them to stay longer. You know, I was, I was glad to help them. Uh, and now, you know, now they're going to be able to do more. I think it's, 
you know, I, I shouldn't speculate too much because even though they tell me what they're going to do, one week they'll tell me what they're going to do, and the next week it's something a little different, right? So, but you're probably going to be able to sit down. You know, now the only time we're able to sit down and enjoy their stuff is when when we had the outdoor dining space out there. But right. The winter came, and they said we had to put you know hundreds of sandbags into these things, and then you know have to worry about getting rid of it later. I decided not to have an outdoor space, so so they haven't had really any indoor indoor. You know, anybody sitting down eating their stuff, we, uh, they're going to be able to do that again soon. And so, so there's no indoor dining in New York at this oh, point. Oh, there is, there is. Oh. But what I'm saying is, they chose not to. They turned my restaurant into a factory. It was unbelievable. And, and what was really unbelievable was when we finally were allowed to have indoor dining again. We were allowed to have it at 25 percent. They would transform this place in a matter of a half hour. It was unbelievable. It's like it's like watching, you know, looking at Madison Square Garden and, and watching a, 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 you know, a concert from the night before get turned into a basketball court. It was like yeah. all this stuff. So the, the indoor dining was there, but they 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 were leery about that. And uh, while we still had the outdoor setup, they used that, and people would sit. People like that, um, but now I think they're gonna they're gonna take advantage of indoor dining. I'm pretty sure. So, 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 did you know Alyssa before this, or were you just a legend? And she said, "I'm gonna ask this man for help." Tell tell me how how that started. Well, I don't know what her ultimate goal was, but she approached me. Um, she said she had been into the restaurant. She's, I believe, she said that we chatted. I, I you know. I talked to a lot of people, so I didn't remember. Yeah. But, um, you know, she wanted to know if she could use our kitchen as a commissary for this stuff. And, and and you know. And what was your immediate thought at that point? We don't open until 6 o'clock. How about you come in and, and you use the place and, you know, and, and do your whole thing here, which is probably what she was hoping for. I don't know if she thought it was possible. But you know we're on we're on the best best restaurant street in New York. Okay, okay. so um, I, I think she you know it was like a dream to be on that street, and I was able to make her dream come true. You That's know, right? You know, it's just and it really worked out well. You know, and I, and I love helping people, whether they have my name on their sign or not. You know, so so what? Where is it? Uh, give me an example of when someone's come to you. You know, with Polly, I can do this, I can do this, or I can do this. Give me your opinion. Uh, I ask questions about what they're thinking about. Um, and I analyze it to see if they're really thinking. Pro I'll give you an example of somebody who came to me uh, through a good friend of mine. Said he wanted to open up a pizza truck. And, you know, I asked him, I said, well, why do you want to do that? I said, you know, I said, can you, you going to be able to sell alcohol on your pizza truck? No, you know, so I'll, you know, I'll look and I'll, I'll say, look, you know, I, I make a living selling pizza. I make a life selling alcohol, right? Serving. I don't sell anything. I serve. Right. Right. So, um, so, you know, I would look and see what they're planning on doing. Sometimes they know more than me. They already have a good plan and I just encourage them, you know, uh, you know, and, and, and people have called me over the years and I'm always I'm always helpful. I always do the best I can to, to give them, you know, advice or encouragement because people did that for me. So who's someone from from your past that made an impact on you that you know still uh, reverberates with you today? Well, Chris Bianco, when when I was planning on doing this, I sat down with him, I went and uh, before he opened in his place, he has a bar next door. My son was with me. We sat down. He, he, he was so welcoming. He was so encouraging. He said, sure, I'll talk with you, Paulie. Come on out. Give me a call when you get here, yada, yada, yada. I called. and We were going to have lunch together. I'm busy. Meet me in my bar at 4 o'clock. He opened at 5. And we sat down, and I started asking him questions. And, and the, the greatest thing that he did for me was he validated things I was doing already. 
You know, I didn't, you know, do I want to spend all of this money on these DOP tomatoes when I know that I've had other tomatoes that taste good to me? Am I imagining that or is it just that I'm cheap and I don't want to spend the money? And that's what he said. What you should do, Paul, is you taste the tomatoes, the ones you like the best. Those are the ones you use. OK. And, and I asked him about fresh mozzarella. You know, I did. I, I made fresh mozzarella at home. Right. For my pizza tastings. But I didn't you know, know what I should be doing when I open up a shop. And I asked him. He said, look, Paul, he says, I make my own fresh mozzarella here. Okay, the only reason I do that is because I can't find good mozzarella in, in Phoenix. You know, so that's why I make my own. But if I was you, you're opening up in Brooklyn. You got a hundred, hundred I, I, I still hear him saying that. You got a hundred guys who can make, you know, make mozzarella. Go to them, support them, support their business. They'll support you. And you'll be getting a product that they, you know, that they're experts at. And, yeah. and, and I applied that to so many other things as well. So he was very influential. Another guy that was very influential was Mark Iacono, okay? Because I looked at him. You know, you have to believe that you could do this, right? So I, I worked in the corporate world all this time. I never, I didn't go to chef school. I didn't work in a pizzeria. And I didn't want to do any of that. I just wanted to get the frig out of the corporate world and start doing what I love to do, right? And I looked, and I started doing the, the, you know, the pizza tastings at home to accomplish that. But I looked at Mark, and I saw here's a guy that never worked in, in pizza or restaurant at all, who built his own place from scratch, and with it, he opened the place, and whatever happened happened, and within a week, within a week. He was the most popular pizzeria in New York. You couldn't get in there within a week. Wow. And 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 that, you know, that to me validated, you know, what, what I wanted to do and gave me the belief that I could make it happen. He was in construction, you know. And he he, you know, today you see him rolling, rolling out his dough with a wine bottle. That was because his dough was too cold and he couldn't stretch it. And he wanted his grandmother's rolling pin and and he sent his brother home to get it. While, while people were waiting for pizza, he started rolling with a bottle. He didn't, you know, but he showed me that if you want to do something, you know, you can do that. So he was very influential. The other place that really encouraged me was Roberta's because I wanted to be like them, okay? They, Roberta's? Roberta's in, in Bushwick. Okay. Um, uh, you need to look that up. Um, they... Um, you know, I didn't have a million dollars to spend on a pizzeria. And, and you know, you see a, a lot of people that open up a place, you know, you have to spend all this money. But what Roberta's did, they were like these four guys. I don't know what they were doing. Working in bars. They're working in bars or something. They never they never had a restaurant. And um, as far as I know, right? And they, they found this dump, this old garage, and and didn't do a lot to it. Really didn't do a lot to it. They went out and they got cheap furniture. They had mismatched chairs. They had doors that they used as um, tables, like picnic tables. And the wow. reason they know that they did that is when you look on the side of the table, there was a little that little spot with the three screws for a hinge. And 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 they built this place. Didn't spend a lot of money. They didn't even have gas. They didn't have heat for like months, right? But they built this place, and when you walked in there, you knew you were someplace special. And that just that just encouraged me so much that that you know. And I looked at them, and and the people, and I, and I do this to this day. The people who were working in there, the only way you knew that they worked there is because they had like a checkbook in their hand to take take an order. Other than that, they dressed like the people who went there, and I loved that. And I want I wanted wow. to feel. And so those are the three, you know influences like that plus the guys in, in nomad pizza in uh they were in hopewell at the time they um they had the same setup i wanted to have and and they helped me as well so let's count those four so so it it, it sounds like there's been a lot of uh paying it forward because that's had an influence on you to help other people well we have chris bianco to thank for that because at the end of that discussion i didn't remember much of anything when you drink on an empty stomach, okay, all right, yeah. uh, you know you you don't remember everything. But one thing that I remember, I thanked him profusely. Well, I had to drag him away. I had to drag him out of that bar 
to take him over to his pizzeria so he could serve the people who were waiting in line outside. It was already after five o'clock. And I remember saying to him, thank you so much, Chris. And he said, don't thank me. Pay it forward, he said. So that's been haunting me for 12 years now. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. So, so we've gone 35 minutes. This is the part where I hand it to you. And I say, give people a word oh, of it. Oh, that sounds like you're trying to get me off. I thought, <laughs> you're doing it again. It's going to work this time. Why is it going to work this time? Uh, you got to ask me questions. you got to ask me questions. Okay, let me ask you more, more questions. Okay, so tell me about uh, the biggest challenge you have run into in your pizza career. Well, getting... Other than COVID. Other than COVID. Um, yeah, that's a big challenge. Um, um, get, getting, getting my liquor license. My original liquor license was very difficult. I operated... Derek. Derek's here. It's about to get funny. Here we go. Uh, it's been funny already. Um, that I went five months without it, and I thought I was never going to get it. You know, I was fighting with the landlord because I couldn't get it until they did some work that was expensive that they refused to do, claiming it was up to me to do it. Uh, okay. I spent as much money on a friggin' lawyer. What's the difference between a landlord? And an attorney. What is the difference between a landlord and an attorney? Not a goddamn thing, okay? Because each of them, like, you know, the sperm cell has a one in a million chance of becoming a human being one day and they don't, okay? Sorry if you're an attorney and you're on here, but it's the only joke I got, all right? <laughs> uh, I spent more money paying this guy to get the landlord to step up to the plate and pay it. And, and in the long run, after spending all that money on this guy, I wound up spending the money myself and deducted it from the rent. And he oh, really? worked for two and a half years. And then one day, oops, it's gone. What happened? You know. But for that five and a half months, you know, it wasn't just that I wasn't making the money that I could make selling a beer at that time for six dollars or seven, let's say, right? Six. Uh, and I'm selling Mexican Cokes instead, right? Actually, the profit margin wasn't bad on the Mexican Cokes. Um it was the fact that people would come because in New York, if you don't have a liquor license, you can't do BYOB. The only time you can do BYOB is when you already have a license, which unless you're just like a dunce and, and you know, and I would do that. Right. Why would you do that? So, um, so you can't do it. So people, they, I wouldn't make any money because I was not um, offering as, you know, enough alcohol i didn't have any alcohol to offer people just wouldn't come so you know the patience i had with that i guess that was the biggest challenge to get through that spring and summer keep my head above water and then as soon as we got the wine and beer license everything boom changed. boom yeah it really did literally so eric, eric wants to know should everyone should every guest give every restaurant a five star absolutely not absolutely not but but as, as people have said, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. So people should say, so there should be no one stars, you're saying. Right. Don't, don't, you know, if you had a bad time, talk with the owner of the restaurant. Tell them about your experience. Give the, give the owner the opportunity to make it right for you. Okay. I had, I had a, uh, I got a, a, an Instagram DM last night from somebody who said I ordered three Hellboy slices and a cheese slice. I got three cheese slices and, and a Hellboy slice, right? Uh, took a picture of them to prove that he wasn't lying. Right. With the receipt right there. So what did I do? He came to me. He didn't write a one-star review. Okay? Right. He, he reached out and he said, I, I don't need you to do anything. I just want to let you know that you should let your people, you know, make sure your people are being more careful. So what did I do? You, 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 you gave him twice as much for free. More than twice, okay? I gave them for actually exactly twice because I said, here, come back, you know, come. He, I guess he had it delivered, I don't know. I said, come back, show this to whoever's at the window and get the pie of your choice on me. There first, go. first thing I said was, I'm sorry. Right. But, you know, and, and, you know, they gave me that opportunity. Other people, they feel that they get, this guy wrote a one-star review 
It was a nasty review. My, or my, or my people right? No. They yelled out, you know, no tip. They, they, they yelled out to the, the guys making pizza in the back. You know, what, what are you doing that for? Okay. They didn't give you no tip. You know, fine. You know, you, you, you're risking, you know, you're risking a lot working, but just zip it. Okay. And okay. Now, I and love anchovies. I don't think Eric does. What do you think of anchovies? Oh, I love anchovies on a nice seeded Italian bread. Just, just take a slice. Um, and I, and I like them on a, um, I like them on a pie, but you don't want them to be too salty. You don't want to put too much on. I had a pie um, at one time that had anchovies on it. It's called the Luca Brasi. Luca Brasi sleeps with the fishes. So. This is, um, uh, are you going to Pizza Expo? If there is one, I don't think there's going to be one. At least now, Eric was posting the other day that there would be one. Okay. I was told by someone that this is the game. Okay. If they cancel it now, there's no insurance money. If they cancel it, maybe within 30 days, they get insurance. Uh... That's what I've been told. I'm not getting my hopes up. There's nothing, very few things in life I enjoy as much as being at Pizza Expo. It's my social event of the year. I get to see people I normally don't see. A, a lot of them seem to be happy to see me. It's just a great, great time. Do I learn some stuff? Yeah, a little bit. Do I eat too much? Yeah. And most of it's not that good, okay. Uh, but it's just a great, great time. And I, I truly hope that we get to go. Plus I get to visit my friend Vincent, who opened up a brand new uh, location of, of Good Pie. I don't know if you know about Good Pie. It's mm -hmm. the Arts District in Vegas. Vincent, Vincent is just such a great guy. He's just full of positivity, full of excitement. And uh, I miss him. I want to go see him. And, uh, you know, so I hope, but I'm not counting on him. Not in June. Not in June. Thinks you're better looking than me. I am. Truth or no truth? I got more hair. You do I have more hair. hair. Well, I got more hair. Yeah. I got a nicer hat than you. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I wear hats, but 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 not not a lot. So hopefully, okay. What is Metro? Oh, um, John Arena's place, right? Yeah, Metro Pizza. So oh, I love seeing John Arena. Always love seeing John Arena. Ask Paulie a question. Okay. Yeah, well, I, that I have. Yeah, I'm that. asking you a question. Where's my hat from? Where is that hat from? My favorite, I can't say best because I always say there are no best, only favorites. But if you put a gun to my head, I'd say the best clam pie in Connecticut is in what town? Metro? I don't know. No, no, no. no. Stop. You're not a pizza guy. I'm um, not. I'm not. New, ha New Haven claims they're like the pizza capital of the world. But okay. I was told by, you know, fairly – Famous restaurant tour that the best clam pie in Connecticut was in West Haven in a place called Zupardi's. And this is their hat. This is a good looking hat that matches perfectly with the, the black quarter zip. I never knew it was a quarter zip until I went on. You are very GQ today. I, oh, always, always. The hat, the hat and the shirt always got to match. Always got to match. Yeah. I had I had something like this on in this color with a white. Like this, a different one. And and is that a hot honey mug? That is a hot my hot honey Yeti thermal mug. A Yeti, there, there you go. There is business right there. This you know, Mike, you know, Mike doesn't cut corners when it comes to his brand ambassador, which I am. I'm his brand ambassador extraordinaire because yesterday I had the mug, I had his colors on, crimson and white, and I, I had my hot honey crimson and white hat. Okay, so there you go. I need. Do you guys have Poly G hats? We do. Okay. I'll, I need to. Can I order them online? Absolutely. You can wear them anywhere. I, me, and my staff cannot wear them at Poly G's. That's the only thing. And I wouldn't wear it at Pizza Expo either. Okay. You okay. want you want to wear a pizza hat at Poly G's or pizza merch or whatever? It has to be from another pizzeria, not from Poly G's. No Poly G at Poly G's. No, no. I, I'd rather. I'd rather be. Uh, singing someone else's praises and hope that someone else sings sings mine. So and you know, this is a college event too. Swag at PGs. 
What's that? No Poly G swag at Poly G. Oh, you could buy it there, but the staff won't wear it. Okay, can't wear it. So okay, and, and you know, and the psychology to that too. You know, um, somebody will say, "Oh, you're wearing your competitor's hat." And I said, "No, we're all colleagues in this business. We're not competitors." And they see that, gee, you feel, you know, I feel good enough about what I'm serving. And, and the dining experience I'm offering that I'm willing to talk about somebody else. I don't feel like I got to outdo the other guy, you know, the, you know, if it happens, it happens, but you'll never hear me say that my pizza is better than anybody else's. I'll always find something good to say. Can I say something good? Eric, Eric obviously missed the beginning of the show because we already talked about Edith's. That is not, that is not past tense. That is present tense. Edith's is moving locations. Yeah. As we speak, as we speak, the baking racks are leaving my premises. And they're going to be opening and making those twisted bagels. Uh, All right. What else you got for me, Polly G? Lost to my God. I don't know. I told you, you got to cook for yourself, right? <laughs> uh, not, not anybody else. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. They, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, I'm staying home and making sure that uh, – Mrs. G is taken care of since she just got her second vaccine. Okay. And we got to make sure that, because I, when I, after I got it, I had two days of chills. So, but, uh, but, but, so we're staying close to home. We've been, you know, we've been watching a lot of good TV. Uh, we watched a really funny documentary. Uh, it was done in a funny way. Lady in the Dale. We watched that. Uh, we've right. been watching a lot of TV. The Lady in the Dale, it was about, a, it's, you gotta, you gotta see it. It's on HBO, HBO Max, whatever. What else have we been watching? I don't know. We, we've been watching. I come home from the restaurant. Now I go to the restaurant. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be at the you, you schmooze them or you lose them. Uh, and then I come home and we'll, you know, we'll watch some stuff. So. Who are you training at your restaurants to uh, schmooze people like you? Who am I trying to get? Training, training. Who are you training in in the schmooze, um, well, the the people who are uh, on apologies now is that uh, um, right now? Yeah, that's it. And the Edens people kind of got some schmooze they, training there. They got the Edens now because they yeah. they can't just schmooze at their little stand that was in my doorway. They're gonna have tables to walk around to, I believe. You know? Yeah, you gotta walk and schmooze. And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see what's going on. Eric wants you to talk about stuff you don't normally talk about. What percentage of concerts that I attended did I partake at? I clapped at every single one. I was just 51 years ago last week. Yeah. I attended a concert uh, 10 years after, and that came out on a live double album. Uh, the concert was February 28, 1970. It was a, it was a great show. Ten years after, uh, Zephyr, or, or Doug Kershaw, actually. Doug Kershaw is a, a fiddler. It's kind of a country kind of fiddler. Okay. Third on the bill, and third on the bill was Zephyr, which was a great bluesy kind of rock band. It had a great lead singer. Uh, her name was Candy Gibbons. Uh, she's gone. Quaaludes in a hot tub don't mix. And uh, it's a true story. And, and the guitarist was a guitar legend. Went on, you know, went on uh, to become a great, great guitar legend before he OD'd. His name was Tommy Bolin. They were a great group. So now, I was going to say that this wasn't Eddie Van Van Halen you're talking about because this was before his time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Tommy Bolin. Okay, this was. Uh, but when he meant partaken, I'm not sure what, what Eric meant there. Yeah, yeah. Me, I have no oh, idea. Did I get high? I mean, did I get high at the concert? Every single one. Every single one. Uh, well, maybe after a while I did stop. If that's what you meant, every single one. There, there, there you go. All right, Polly. We are so now we're at the point. So now we're we're, we're rapping. Are you ready to rap? Oh uh, yeah, to sure. Why not? Okay. So for everyone watching on replay. Okay, and for Eric now, since he is here, give us a word of encouragement to send us into the week that is the one week anniversary of what was a year ago. Forget about how long it's been.
just keep on aiming for what you want to do, okay? Believe in yourself. Find somebody, find someone or something that's going to prove to you that what you want to do is possible. You hunt that out like you're hunting food after you haven't eaten for a week. And that's what you need to make things happen in this life. And just do it. Walk through those walls of fear, okay? Because as I always say, they're paper thin, and there's usually very good things on the other side. And 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 whatever you believe in, I, I happen to believe in God. I can't explain what God is. I don't think we have the, the ability to comprehend God. But I know that God's there and, and, and I have God's power within me. Believe in that power to get you out of trouble if the risk you take doesn't work out well. That's great. That is encouraging. It sends people into the weekend. All right, everyone. Paulie, thank you for being you. here for the second time. Uh, we're we're, we're going to do some interesting stuff. So Paulie's, Paulie's going to be coming back another time when we start having panels on. You'll, you'll you'll be a panelist with various people. Yeah, 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 I've done panels before. Okay, we're gonna have have you on. As, oh wait, Eric's got an, another comment. Let's see what it is. Yeah, yeah, keep on asking, Eric. Keep on asking questions. Keep me on. <laughs> PG. Why? Because I got high at a concert. Sean to Pizza Expo. You, you know what? We're gonna. I'd love to go to Pizza Expo. You should do this show from Pizza Expo. Do a panel at Pizza Expo. Oh, when is Pizza yeah. Expo? When? Yeah. Probably in about a year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like around the, tw the end of June, 20 something. 20 something. Uh, uh, you know the, you know the, uh, the, what's his name? Oh, how can I forget his name? He does a uh, smart pizza marketing podcast. He does it. He does uh, his show. Nick? From, no, what's his name? Oh my God. Don't tell. No, I can't even say this because they don't know. I don't know that I forgot his name. Um, in any case, he does a show from Pizza Expo. He does it at the, the Forza Forney uh, booth. Bruce restaurant. Irving. Bruce Irving. There you go. There, there you go. go. All right. So maybe you could do the same thing. This would be I, I could do a pizza-themed week. There are lots of people that now – you wouldn't be on the schedule, but, he, he, you know, Bruce seemed to get Forza Forney people to let him do it at his booth. Maybe somebody could do that for you too. Maybe I could partner with Perfect Crust Pizza Liners that week. Are they going to have a booth there? I I would hope that Eric, would be Eric, the perfect. We're going to have a booth there, right? Yeah. Uh, there, there's got to be the Perfect Crust Pizza Liner booth. Has Has Eric gone silent on us? Yeah. As soon as we ask him if you could be in his booth, he disappears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Sean at the Perfect Crust booth. There you All go. Right. We're, we are talking about I it. Be, I want to be part of that. All right. We will have a good time. All right, Polly. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. All right. You, everyone else, have a well, blessed this, weekend. This is we're saying goodbye. The sun is coming. Didn't the I tell you the sun, sun is coming out? Out of the building? There we go. It's going to be a beautiful time. Be blessed. Enjoy the weekend. See you all Monday.